Hi, Dr. Carr. So Hi, lovely to be chatting with you today at the office. So, you know, it never ceases to surprise me how many people think that hormones are just about sex. <laughs> you know, like you say hormones to someone and they go, oh no, my sex drive is great. or Which is you know, great. <laughs> because that's not true for a lot of people. So really what I wanted to, to, to expand upon today are what are hormones and why do we need them? Oh, uh, well, first and foremost, there are multiple hormones. Now, I assume you're talking about um, the f female hormones, estrogen, progesterone, and testosterone. Now, the reason Dr. Iyer and I don't like to call them male hormones and female hormones are because men make estrogen too and women make testosterone too. But in general, people usually call estrogen and progesterone women's hormones and testosterone becomes a man's hormone, but mm -hmm. it's not technically mm -hmm. correct. Now, these hormones, besides a whole lot of gazillion others, there are, I think, about 26 hormones in all. <clears throat> they have a huge impact on our uh, health and well-being. And they are basically chemical messengers which are produced in one part of the body. It depends on which hormone it is. And it has actions on, and actually for estrogen and progesterone, they have actions all over the body. And they are usually carried in blood. And that is how they go to the different parts. And interestingly, these wonderful hormones are also locally made in places like the brain. Nice. So hormones are chemical messengers. They control very specific actions and effects that we need in the body. They work by chemical reactions and they're needed for multiple purposes in the body. Men, women make estrogen, even progesterone, yeah. testosterone, and we just have different ratios of these hormones. And they all have incredible impact, not only on what we think they were designed to do, but elsewhere as well. Yeah. So for example, estrogen and the brain, whereas we think estrogen hot flashes, but every woman, whether she has a uterus or not, has a brain, <laughs> you know, yeah. progesterone. You know, it's, oh, if you're a woman without a uterus, then you don't need progesterone replaced, but you have a brain and you have that, bone. That's what and I it's say. important for all of those things. That's what I keep saying. If someone has had a hysterectomy where the uterus is removed at a surgery and they are not given progesterone, does it mean they also lose their brain when they lose the uterus? Right. So I think in traditional medical models, it's not recognized that hormones have impact everywhere. And you know, when I started replacing hormones, what, almost 18 years ago now in men and women, mm -hmm. I used to talk about testosterone and how it affects mental agility. I just had that conversation with a patient today where she's like, oh, I, I'm not using the full dose of testosterone you prescribed because I don't want to get buff. Mm -hmm. And I said, but you need mental agility, you need your mood, you need your quick thinking. These are all things that testosterone helps you with. It also helps your bone strength. Now, if you're overdosed with a hormone, you will have some effects, yeah. right? Side effects. So in men on too high dosing of, of testosterone, which we've seen in our practice before, and men that have come in where testosterone was prescribed and they're not always followed mm -hmm. as carefully, yeah. Uh, they get uh, thick blood where they need to do blood donations. Mm -hmm. They can grow uh, breast tissue. Yeah. And our patient, unfortunately, had prostate cancer by the mm -hmm. time he came to see us as well. So, But here, just I'd like to pause. Testosterone replacement therapy, if done correctly, does not cause exactly. so prostate I, yes. cancer. Yeah. And That's hypertension right. is another big one. Yeah. So, you know, uh, people think that they can just take hormones from the guy at the gym or their family doc. Like this poor gentleman was prescribed it by his family doctor who had no idea about how hormones metabolize or anything. If you keep up to date in the current literature, testosterone does become estrogen and it's now recognized that estrogen impacts the prostate tissue more than testosterone does. But if you talk to most doctors, they'll tell you, no, testosterone causes prostate cancer, which is a complete myth and misinformation. 
And no, testosterone doesn't give you oily skin and acne if you're a woman or a deep voice because we're using the right ratio of testosterone when we're replacing testosterone in women. So hormones are essential for healthy aging and longevity. And I've maintained this, you know, when we opened the clinic, my favorite tagline was, you age because your hormone levels decline. Mm -hmm. Your hormone levels do not decline because you're aging, right? And according to medicine, if you're 60, you're supposed to not have any estrogen. And so that's normal. <laughs> no, that's normal when you're old, right? But we're not about getting old. We want to live independently. We want to live with vitality. We want a health span, which hormone rebalancing gives us. And so to clarify, even estrogen, you know, it's not going to cause you breast cancer. Whole different ballgame if you've got estrogen sensitive breast cancer and that sort of thing. But by and large, a woman's risk for breast cancer is not increased by taking hormone replacement no. therapy when we monitor the metabolites, correct? And that's understanding methylation, so that's many understanding factors. how the body handles it and what the byproducts are. So every, hor so, uh, I had a patient today, new patient saying that she wants, she wants hormone replacement therapy and she picked us because in our clinic we are so cautious with how we do it and how we test it because her friends are on hormone replacement therapy and they all have side effects. Okay. So what is the difference? Like when, when people are just getting prescriptions for their hormones, like at their first visit or whichever hormone clinic they're going to, why is it that this patient is telling me, but my friends all have side effects and I was very hesitant to get it? There are so many factors. First of all, when a patient comes to you for hormone therapy, they don't go with a prescription for hormones the first day because we focus on okay. gut health, because estrogen is metabolized through the gut. So if you don't have healthy gut, it's not just because these are, you know, estrogens applied on the skin and they're supposed to be safer. No, there is still a risk if it is not done correctly. If people, if women are on, you know, huge doses of estrogen mm -hmm. because they are being monitored based on symptoms and not based on uh, sophisticated testing. So a lot and, of factors. And what's and, in balance with the yes. others. And also estrogen has to be in balance with progesterone and testosterone as well. Mm -hmm. And it's not just hormones. It's also, you know, insulin resistance, your carbohydrate metabolism, whole lot of other things which matter when it comes to hormone therapy. So hormones matter. They matter to your brain, your skin even. Yeah. Let, let, come, come on, why did we leave off the did, most yeah, important thing? So <laughs> collagen degrades by 30% when your estrogen levels drop. And if you want to maintain your collagen, estrogen is the hormone that modulates that. Um, and then also as a final note to why do you need hormones and what are they and how they work and all of that, we also know that your stress hormones and your metabolic triad hormones have impact on the hormones that you make or that we give you. So if we're not looking at how all of your hormones work together, like an orchestra and symphony, then yes, you can have side effects like weight gain from progesterone. I've had lots of patients mm -hmm. come to me and say, oh no, I've tried progesterone. My doctor gave me a cream or a pill and it just didn't work. I gained belly fat. Yes, you mm -hmm. will. We don't get patients complaining mm -hmm. of gaining belly fat after we give them progesterone. But it's always about looking at the life-sustaining hormones, the non-life-sustaining hormones, and how they all work together, and then whether the hormones can work safely and effectively at the cell receptor site. Yeah. So I've made lots of videos on my Facebook Live about toxins and hormone receptors, and I'm just hoping that some of you have watched that. And if you haven't, go find me on my Facebook page. But know that hormone balance is critical for healthy aging and longevity. Oh, yeah. Thank you.